Hello and welcome to this new lesson of the course. In this case, I'm presenting you the images I decided to choose to do these lessons. We're going to start with the mountain. In this case, we'll create some lines to find the vanishing point. In this case, it's in this part. In the second, which is a forest, we have the vanishing point a bit lower. In the one I just did, it's in the top right part of the image. And in the last one, in the top left. Once we've discovered these vanishing points, we're going to give some opacity back to the images I had at the beginning. So I can make this series of color palette simplification I was talking about. But before that, we'll draw over these images in a very sketchy and geometrical way what we want in our final illustration to appear. This way, we'll try to add to our long-term memory a series of collections to eventually apply to some illustrations that can require the same since we're using it as a reference and despite we're using it as a reference eventually the illustration itself or the drawing or the design can keep changing depending on our taste. It's because of this that we're going to simplify the color palette which will suppress the idea we have of the images below so we draw the details from memory of what we perceived from the image. This way we'll get amazing results. Now we're going on to the simplification of the color palette. So we'll reduce its colors so we don't beat around the bush when choosing them. We'll navigate to filter, pixelate, crystallize. And from here, we'll try to amplify our palette to the max. I'm using a number around 50, but you can try and see what works for you. I'll leave it this way to see it. If you want to synthesize even more, you can try to apply some Gaussian blur or similar to give it some more life to the drawing itself. But since this closes everything so well and leaves it so defined, I consider this one of the best ways we can have when establishing our color palette. So we have the palette and we're going to put it aside so it doesn't distract us and we can work more comfortably. And after that, we're going to see our own sketch. We'll begin with the first on the left. On it, we're going to apply several gray rectangles so we can take them as a base upon which we'll apply the different colors and shapes that will form our work. In the first one, what we're going to do is try and visualize, as I've been telling you this whole time, the part in which we already had that image done. So. What we'll also use is the skill of using our own memory in order to draw. Okay, so with the brush and using the blue color, we'll do very simple and geometric shapes. What I'm imagining right now is a sky which has certain parts in which blue and white simulating clouds are the main parts. So with the brushes I provided as an attached file, you can try and let your imagination run wild. But basically what you have to see is that it's a good ensemble in which we can distinguish the mountains in this case, since it's a mountain landscape. And just like I explained in previous lessons, we have to be able to tell which element is farthest and which is closest try to remember what was more illuminated or partially hidden. And well, we'll have to consider that since we don't have the, the real image we used as a reference in front of us, it will be difficult for the illustration to be even similar. Or well, thanks to the color palette and the previous sketch, it can have nice results.
Right now, I'm using the polygonal lasso tool, which is a kind of selection which makes pretty straight strokes. You may mistake it for the pen tool, but the pen tool is a bit more versatile when making complex and simpler shapes. Among the selection tools you can find, there's the magic wand, the quick selection tool, the lasso. So instead of working with the regular lasso, which lets you select freely, there's the polygonal lasso, which does it in a more strict and geometric way. Well, as you see, I've been completing the drawing with the color palette we have here. And now I applied a filter, which is guiding me a bit to decide the tones I want to be directing towards. As I said, I'm working a bit from memory to decide which are the zones I want to color and which I want to give a bit of room when imagining. Also, as you keep drawing and completing your illustration, you'll realize that the more you advance, the less details it will need. Or maybe you even want to innovate a bit and add some details like, I don't know, some kind of, of weed or something like that. It also depends on the landscape you're creating at the moment. That's why I recommend a small format like the one I'm doing right now, that is, the initial Photoshop file was an A4 landscape oriented, maybe. And what you're seeing is that I'm constantly working on these rectangles I made. The rectangles which are gray and I'm not expanding over these limits. Well, as you see, this is taking shape. What I'm doing is alternating brushes, which are the ones providing these textures and these different tones. I also remind you, as you can see on top, if you notice in the part of the brush preferences panel, I'm working with the dissolve blending mode, which is what provides that texture and that lately I'm applying quite a lot in my work because I see it brings quite visual richness to the image in which we're working. Right now I'm trying to add some relief to the mountains here. And well, it's just a matter of completing a bit and keep seeing how the brushes combine best. Right now I'm working with a quite plain brush that has no special feature that's helping us. And just keep completing with the tones that I remind you are on the left side. You keep selecting them with the eyedropper. If you are using the brush tool as a shortcut, you can hold Alt so the pointer turns into the eyedropper if you want to speed up the work. And well, since your color palette is closed and limited, you'll have all the colors you want in the drawing you're doing immediately, so with just holding Alt. And using the eyedropper will be useful and speed up your work. It's not like you're starting from zero, so this is quite useful to do some kind of gradients and such. Okay, so what I'm doing now is adding a spotlight. As you can see, it brings enough luminosity to the image, and I also wanted to add a bit more volume, so it looks like a part of the valley is in shadow, while the back of it shines with that spotlight that could be the sun that rises over these mountains. Now it's just about erasing bits and pieces of the layer I just created in the way we consider more appropriate. Well, in this case, it's to try and darken it a bit. As you see, the change is quite noticeable. I'm going to adjust this here because it looks a bit weird and well, let's go on to the part of concept brushes. 
In case of rocks or mountains, you can alternate between the rock texture, brushes, and such. As you can see here, the ones I'm adding. You can also try with this one, which is an effect kind of like it was grass or some kind of weed. Or even with larger plants, try not to overuse it because then you can tell it's a brush. So despite we want to do a concept so the client gets in situation when you hand them the work and tell them, look, the scene is going to be situated on a mountain that I thought it to be this way, with this lighting and this position, with this perspective, etc. Also, for example, this is a bird's brush that I liked a lot. What you can do is use it in a darker tone so it gives a, it like a cool vibe. And what I said about the grass and such, those are details that is cool to have in mind. Back to what I was saying, this is only for someone to get an idea. Obviously, it doesn't have as much detail as we'd like in a more developed concept. But in this case, it's focused in color and composition. So more or less, it's like this. And it's just about keep practicing. Try not to focus in the detail, please. And look for your own inspiration when deciding what you want to place. Like, for example, I'm putting some kind of detail. As I was saying, the closer it is, the darker it has to be. So we'll suppose this is the point of view of the character. And, well, this would be the result. I hope you like the lesson and see you in the next one.